We're going to look at now the case for MRE FSK frequency shift keying and examine the minimal distance from the signal space in order to determine the performance, the bit error rate performance of MFSK. So this topic is covered in our textbook in the decision regions for coherent detection, in this case the FSK section. So this is a um, representation of the signal space for FSK. Of course, our figure here is in three dimensions because it's very hard for us to imagine an m-dimensional space. Uh, but recall that FSK, if you have m symbols, there is an m-dimensional space uh, in the uh, signal space. Now, the particular definition of FSK is given here. And recall that it is an equal energy for each symbol. So there's one value of E, doesn't matter which symbol we're using. And in this case, each one of the basis vectors is essentially a symbol vector. We just take the symbol and we normalize it for unit energy, and that becomes one of the basis vectors. That means that each one of the symbols lays on one of these axes in the symbol space. It's a, a symbol is a basis vector. Uh, we're talking about coherent detection uh, in the signal space, and uh, we assume that this uh, phase, uh, we've set it to zero without loss of generality because we could always uh, rotate it. So this is the signal space representation and now we have to determine what is the minimal distance in this uh, signal space. So the first thing we look at is the vector representation of the symbols. And the symbols are orthogonal from one another. Remember they are the basis vectors, they are orthogonal. That means that if I look at the um, vector representation, it's going to be a vector of all zeros except for one one of the values is going to have the energy of that symbol on it. So the ith, for the ith symbol, it'll be the ith element of the vector, which is non-zero. All the other ones are zero. And the non-zero value is the square root of the energy of the symbol, which of course is the same for all symbols. So now we would like to look at what is the minimal distance. So I'm going to take two arbitrary symbols, symbol i, symbol k, and uh, see what uh, the distance is between these two. So the distance by definition, here we have the distance between any two uh, symbols, is the square root of the sum of the uh, coefficients squared, the difference in the coefficients squared for each one of the coefficients in the vector. So this is a sum over j equal 1 to m. And here we have the elements of this vector. And of course, they're all going to be 0 except for the ith value. And when this one is non-zero, of course, the other one will be zero because the non-zero element is different in these two. So that means that the sum of m uh, elements is going to be mostly a bunch of zero minus zero, except for two values. So in the end, this becomes a square root of the um, ith element of si squared plus the kth element of sk squared. And of course, they both have the same energy. So it's the square root of the energy squared gives the energy. So the energy of symbol uh, i plus the energy of symbol k, which gives us 2 times the energy per symbol, the square root of that. So that is the distance between uh, symbol i and symbol k. And of course, there's nothing simple, uh, special about i and k. So this will be the case for any two symbols in the uh, space. So that means that all of the uh, symbols are equidistant from one another on top of being equal energy. It all has to come from the symmetry of this constellation. So all symbol pairs are at the minimal distance because they're all at the same distance, so that is the minimal distance. So we have found the uh, minimal distance, and the next thing we need to know in order to use our union bound to calculate uh, an approximation for the bit error rate is to um, know the uh, number of pairs at the minimal distance. Now, in this case, all pairs are at the minimum, minimum, uh, minimum distance, so I have to just be able to count all pairs. How many pairs are there? And so, uh, given that there are m and we're looking for any pairs for 2, uh, the number of these pairs is uh, the binomial coefficient m choose 2. So m factorial over m minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and uh, that simplifies to m times m minus 1 over 2. Uh, odd or even uh, multiplied gives an even number divided by 2. We're going to get a nice whole number for this. So now I have the number of symbols at the minimal distance. And I know the minimal distance. So I have de min, which is uh, square root of 2es. And I have the number of 
pairs at the minimal distance. Now I can change this to EB uh, by using the simple relationship between the symbol energy and the bit energy. So it's the bit energy times log 2m. So from this, I can get an approximation for the probability of error that comes from the union bound. This is my general equation. And now I plug in the value for d min, and I plug in the value for k. And that uh, simplifies so that m fsk is m minus 1 is a multiplicative factor before the q function. And then the argument of the q function is the square root of eb times log 2m divided by n0. So now we have everything we need to describe uh, reception and performance of MFSK. We've seen previously the form of the receiver, and the receiver has M branches. We need one branch for each one of the uh, symbols. Uh, then uh, we will, of course, uh, select the one that is closest. Uh, from the received vector, the closest symbol, that will be the symbol that we choose. And in making the selection, uh, the performance that we will have is given by this expression. So we have the uh, receiver structure and the performance in terms of probability of error. Now if we look at the uh, BER curve, uh, we know that the typical behavior is this um, waterfall curve. So we're plotting EB over N0 and here a probability of error. And if we look at uh, the FSK performance as we increase the number of um, symbols in the constellation, uh, we're going to see that the performance improves. So here we have k equal 1. So this would be the performance of B FSK. And as we uh, increase the number of k, and m is equal to 2 to the k in this uh, parameterization, we can see that the uh, bit error rate is getting better and better as we uh, increase the number of symbols. So this is something very special for FSK. And in fact, it's something special for orthogonal MRE signaling. So FSK is one example of orthogonality. Remember, each symbol is orthogonal from the other. But any way that I achieve orthogonality, whether it's in the frequency domain, time domain, some other means, the orthogonality in itself is what gives us this characteristic of improving performance as the number of symbols increases. If we were to look at non-orthogonal uh, MPSK, uh, remember MPSK was the previous case that we examined, and this M MPSK is all around a circle, and certainly the symbols are not orthogonal from one another. This is, a non this is an example of a not orthogonal one. And we saw really the opposite behavior, that as we increased, here is the performance of BPSK, and as we increase K, the number of symbols increases and the performance is getting worse. And remember, all this makes intuitive sense looking at the signal space because previously we had FSK, it was a different, um, uh, every time I added a symbol, I added a dimension to the signal space and the, um, uh, there, there was no deterioration in performance. Now in this case, they're always around the unit circle and the more symbols I add, the closer I'm forcing these symbols to be and the, the, the performance deteriorates.